Hi guys, good afternoon and happy New Year's Eve to all of you. I hope you're all having a safe and wonderful day off. And I am uh, here today to give you my episode review of the latest episode of the hit CBS All Access show, Star Trek Discovery. Upon finishing this episode, I realized that next week is the season three finale. Holy crap, how did that come up on us so quickly? Time flies when you're having fun or when time stops moving, I guess. <laughs> Before I begin, of course, please be warned this is a spoiler-filled episode review, so if you're not caught up on Discovery by this episode or previous episodes, you might not want to keep watching or listening as I will be discussing spoilers. So, you have been warned. That being said, let's make it so. Wrong show, same franchise. Don't fight me. <laughs> um, for starters, a uh, very exciting episode. I always enjoy a good rescue, take back the ship type episode. Sometimes not literally a ship, but like just an overall re exciting rescue mission type of story, whether they're on a literal ship, spaceship, wooden ship, whatever. Um, those are always exciting stories to me. And this was also a very revealing episode as they revealed that Emerald Chain isn't just some massive criminal enterprise or organization. It's actually almost like a sovereign body of government or a non-sanctioned government body because it sounds like they have their own laws and rules and... Uh, members like planets or at least races that are members of Emerald Chain, which would explain why, you know, Osiris crew consists of so many different species. But um, I thought it was interesting how instead of like a, a typical hostage negotiation or standoff between the hostage taker and the negotiator, Osiris actually proposing a truce or peace or perhaps even an alliance between the Federation and Emerald Chain. But what kind of ramifications could that have for what remains of the Federation? We don't know. I didn't like seeing the Andorian die. I do love how he so bravely, defiantly stood up to Osira right before she blew him away. I'll be sad to see that guy go, but at least he helped his allies uh, by creating a diversion and helping them escape from that room they were all holed up in. Uh, it was great to see that villain return, uh, the actor Jake Weber. This was the guy who had the disfigured hand from being forced to be sent outside during like a the equivalent of a nasty blizzard or ice storm, I guess. And his hand looks like it had suffered from what was essentially frostbite, where you lose a couple of limbs, or in this case, a few fingers, to the intense cold that he was exposed to. And of course, that only makes his character all the more interesting, because there's nothing like having a great disfigured villain, which is what he now has become. Uh, I also felt really bad for Paul in this episode because it's like, you know, Michael refusing to let him take Discovery back to the nebula to save the others, of course, Hugh of all people, and then bringing up or pointing out the fact that if he loses Hugh again, he might not get him back this time and he doesn't want to go through what he went through with the first time he lost him. Thankfully, Hugh was able to come back, but still it was like, ouch. You know, that hurts. So that, that was tough to watch. You know, like Michael's thinking about the good of everyone, the good of the Federation. It was a perfect example of the old Star Trek trope, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. I don't know if we I don't know if we can credit that to Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, or if it's just an old sentiment that Star the Star Trek franchise has always embraced. I'm not sure where it comes from, nor do I really care. It's a good sentiment overall. It's a great one that's always repeated throughout this franchise. So I'm very happy about that. Um, anyway, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, um, yeah, overall exciting episode. Uh, I really actually quite enjoyed the back and forth stuff between the Admiral and Osira. Like I said, not I was not expecting... Um, you know, the negotiation or the standoff to go that route, but I still enjoyed it. It cracked me up when the Admiral revealed that the replicated food they were eating was made from basically human shit or manure, you know, human manure, which was nasty yet really funny at the same time. <laughs> I really loved that. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, yeah, super satisfying, exciting episode. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the next week's uh, season finale. I love the fact that they did not take the ship back by the end of this episode, that the ship is still under Osiris' control by the end of this episode, 
leaving us to what looks like it's going to be a big climactic season finale uh, in next week's episode. So overall, I'm very much looking forward to it. And I really liked this episode, as I hope you guys did as well. Did you like this episode? Why or why not? I want to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for another video I'll be putting up here shortly for my latest episode review of The Stand, another CBS All Access ep ep uh, show. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a wonderful and safe Happy New Year's. And of course, until next time, live long and prosper.